How are you doing? This is UK Fish ID videos. For these series of films, I'm going to show you how to identify various British fish, both from the sea and fresh water. We're going to go through what they eat, where they live, and how to identify them from similar species. If you'd like to learn more about identifying UK fish, then why not get my latest book? It's available online and in local bookshops. There's a link in the description if you're interested. This week we're looking at the perch family. So perch, zander and roof, and how to tell them apart. Let's get into it. So this week we're looking at perch and perch-like fish and how to ID them. As usual, I'm gonna start with my disclaimer. You can't positively ID fish from color alone. They change color so rapidly, according to health, age, sexual dimorphism, stress, and the environment they live in. So color is only to be used as a guide with other more accurate signs. Let's start with the European perch. They're stocky and broad bodied with rough skin like sandpaper. A greeny yellow body with vertical black bars on the sides. The pectoral, pelvic and tail fins often have a red hue to them, while the two dorsal fins, which are separated, do not. The first dorsal fin is spiked and has a large black spot at the base, while the second one is soft. They've got a large yellow eye and it has pads along the jaw to grip prey rather than teeth. In larger specimens, the back starts to become more humped. Most perch that you're likely to come across will be smaller than your hand, but some can reach sizes of five pounds. They're not a highly prized food fish in Britain, although it was routinely eaten across continental Europe and during World War II was canned from Lake Windermere to help with food shortages. Perch are incredibly inquisitive and have been observed following freshwater eels, waiting for them to find prey and then rush in and steal it. They're found in a plethora of habitats from lakes, ponds, canals and slow moving rivers across Britain. There's not many places you won't find perch. Weedy areas in the structure are often hangouts of perch to hide away and ambush prey. Perch can form huge shoals when younger, but as they mature, they tend to break away into smaller groups or even become solitary. When attacking prey, they can rush to the surface of the water, boiling with fish fry trying to escape. Next up is its smaller cousin, the Ruff. The easiest way to tell it apart from its other two family members, the Perch and Xander, are that it has one fused dorsal fin as opposed to two separated ones. The coloration is a mottled brown with a purple eye. The mouth is relatively small, has large white pelvic fins. Like most fish, female ruff tends to be larger. It has rough pads on the jaw to help it grapple with prey. Perhaps a contender for one of the most underrated and striking fish in Britain. Although a native fish to England, its presence in large lakes across the British Isle has been a cause of concern when interacting with rarer species like char, vendace and whitefish as they multiply quickly and feed on fish eggs and fry. One of the common trains of thought is that ruffers spread to new waters via pike anglers as bait, though few pike anglers would ever use this fish as it's so small and doesn't move much, so I'm not sure how much truth there is to that. It's more likely the ruff get mixed up with other more desirable coarse fish like perch and roach being moved between fisheries. It has a natural distribution within eastern flowing rivers, but has since been spread to many other river systems and large water bodies like the Lake District, Cornish Reservoirs and Scottish Locks. It prefers murky canals, slow moving rivers and deep lakes. Female ruff can produce up to 200,000 eggs, which when the fry hatch can form dense and numerous shoals. The large eye helps with feeding at night in turbid water. In terms of length, they don't get much over three or four centimeters and they can get up to six or seven. Next is the Xander. They have a pointed snout with large eyes, often looking glazed due to the adaptations to see in low light. The mouth is lined with sharp teeth and two prominent fangs. Like a perch, the skin is rough to the touch and has two dorsal fins, one being spiked and the other being more soft and grayling-like. The flanks of the Xander have a greeny brown color, sometimes even silver, with speckled hints of black. 
once referred to as a pike perch, it's not a hybrid, but its own species, albeit in the perch family. First introduced in the 1800s by the Duke of Bedford, who was also responsible for introducing grey squirrels, muntjac deer and whilst catfish. By some legal and many illegal stockings, they're now found in many water courses. Compared to pike, the mouth is not as big. They tend to target much smaller prey. They're native to Eastern Europe, but this fish is now found across the Midlands, East Anglia and southeast of England. Xander do well in large lakes, such as some of the man-made reservoirs like Rutland Water, as well as murky canals and slow-moving rivers. A nocturnal predator, Xander come out to hunt at night, often in loose packs. Male Xander will guard the nest, sitting over it until the fry hatch, and have been documented lashing out at swimmers who get too close. I'll do a very quick honourable mention here as well to the walleye, which are an American species that look very much like Xander, and they were actually stocked into the fen system in England. However, they only seem to persisted for a few years, and then Xander came along. So it's not sure whether Xander outcompeted the walleye, or maybe even hybridised with them. It'd be really interesting to do some genetic tests to see if there's a touch of walleye in Fenland Xander. So next up is the pumpkin seed. Now they're not strictly a perch, but they're in that sort of broad family, so that's why I've included them here. It's almost circular in shape with a single dorsal fin, a bit like a roof, with spikes at the start before it softens off. The belly is yellow with a mosaic of blues, browns, blacks and red on the flanks. Behind the gill is a large black spot with a hint of red. The unusual name for this fish comes from their body shape, resembling the seed of a pumpkin while pond perch, sun perch and punkies are also used. Although not common, they can be locally abundant and prove to be an invasive species, feeding on native fish fry and eggs. It's also been introduced to many parts of Europe where it's become very common in large lakes. Native to North America, it was brought to the UK via the pet trade. Apache populations across the UK normally in stocked commercial fisheries in southern England. They favour well-vegetated lakes, ponds and backwaters of rivers. Being a member of the sunfish family, it's no surprise that they like the heat and they'll bask in the margins of lakes to soak up the warmth. Males build a nest for the female, but they do this before the female arrives so she'll inspect it before laying eggs. So the last fish that I'm going to go in depth on is the European bass, sometimes called a sea bass. They have an elongated body with a metallic silvery colour and sometimes almost a blue tint to it. Its mouth has rough pads to grip prey and has two dorsal fins, the first being spiked. The gills have two spikes on them also. Young bass will sometimes be covered with dark spots to help them blend in, but lose this as they mature. The tail is deeply forked. Bass are very slow growing and take a long time to mature with males between four to seven years and females between five to eight years, and they can live up to 25 years. Given the commercial value, big bass are a rare creature, but some can reach sizes of over 20 pounds. A sight hunter, the bass will rush up to bait fish with such force that they sun them and then come back to mop up any unlucky targets. A warm water species, the bass was once restricted to the southern half of the UK, but warming waters over the past 25 years have seen the species extending northwards around the coasts of the UK and into Scotland. Its habitat is generally coastal waters, estuaries, reefs. Commonly thought as a marine fish, juvenile European bass and some of the larger ones can enter and stay in fresh water for prolonged periods, generally in the summer, to either feed or remove marine parasites. So that's why I've included the European bass here because they do enter rivers and you might mix them up with some of those. Now I'll do a quick honourable mention for the largemouth bass which is a completely different species found in America and is no longer present in England but up until the early 80s there were some in lakes in Dorset and before that there were some in Norfolk but there don't seem to be any that have persisted to today. So how do we tell all these fish apart? Well, let's start with the perch. So they've got those deep, dark, 
vertical bars along the body. Now Xander also have these, but nowhere near as pronounced. They're also the only one of these fish that has got that greeny coloration with red fins. So you've got a fish with vertical dark bars, a greeny coloration, red fins, then it's gonna be a perch. With Ruff, they're pretty easy because they're the only native fish that has a fused dorsal fin. So whereas Perch have got two dorsal fins, Xander have two dorsal fins, Ruff have one single dorsal fin. Pumpkin Seed also have a single dorsal fin, but a vastly different body shape to Ruff. So you're not likely to mix up a Ruff and a Pumpkin Seed. So if you catch a small brown fish with a single large dorsal fin and a Ruff texture to the scales, it's gonna be a Ruff. They also have a much smaller mouth than Perch and Xander, so relatively easy. With Xander, I feel like you're only gonna mix up small Xander with Ruff and Perch, as Xander get much, much bigger. They can get to 20 pounds, whereas Perch only really get to a couple of pounds and Ruff only get to a few ounces. So if you catch something big, it's gonna be a Xander, but they're much more pointed. They've got that pike-like face, which Perch and Ruff don't have. Even when they're small, they look like that, so a very pointy face. Pumpkin seed, as I've mentioned, have got a round body shape, kind of very vividly coloured, very speckly, and a limited distribution. So you're unlikely to come across them anyway. But if you do, they're pretty round. They're the only fish on this list that's got that round body shape. The last one is the European bass, the sea bass. I suppose if they enter the lower reach of the river, you might confuse one with a Xander, but the body shape is what's going to be able to tell them apart. Again, Xander have got that very pointed head. Bass have got a much more blunt head. Bass are generally much more silvery than Xander also. And you're only likely to find bass and Xander uh, in the lower reaches of a river. You're not gonna find them in lakes or places like that either. Don't forget, if you wanna learn more about UK fish, do grab a copy of my book. There's a link in the description if you wanna find out more. Hope you enjoyed that video. If you liked it, please consider subscribing to the channel. It takes two seconds for you and it really helps the channel out. Go and have a look at some of the other UK Fish ID videos we've got on the channel, as well as the underwater and angling content on here. See you next time. Cheers. If you enjoyed this vid, why not check out this other video right here? If you can, please subscribe to the channel. It only takes a couple of seconds and it really helps me out. I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.